What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back here again with another video. So I saw a clip on Twitter, and it really made me realize that some of y'all hatred for Cody Rhodes is just blind hate. I'm not saying everybody has to like him. I get it. I understand. Some of y'all just may not be a big fan of his promo style or a fan of his matches or whatever the case may be. You're entitled to that opinion. But then there's a few of y'all that just blindly hate <clears throat> and make no sense with your arguments. Like it's hard to take your point of views any bit of serious because it's just filled with hate. Just unbridled hate. I'm going to show y'all a clip. I don't know the gentleman's podcast so but i saw the clip and i had to say something about it on twitter and uh it's just one of those things where it's like the hate man y'all gotta let it go y'all gotta let it go he's the top guy you just gotta deal with it all right so this is um someone that i guess posted the clip um no matter how much cody apologists throw out uh excuse he has been exposed, just like um, your grammar has been. All right, let's, let's check this out, man. Let's, I want y'all to just listen to what they have to say. You had a whole four fucking months to do something, to get your... You had no big fish of Roman Reigns. You were by yourself. You could have done something. You could have elevated yourself to that status. Roman Reigns did, but Cody Rhodes did not. He rested on his laurels. He went out there. So what do you guys want to talk about day in and day out? He had three matches with AJ Styles. Where's AJ now? Fuck if I know. And now we have him on SmackDown giving Kevin Owens his best friend a title. Hey, you my best friend? <laughs> <laughs> Are you my best friend? I'm your best friend. You're my best friend? I'm your best friend. You want a title match? I want to... Yeah. Oh wow! I don't know. Why? What happy? I don't know. What happy? I don't think I earned the. But but Roman Reigns didn't earn it. I took so many L's. Yeah, but Roman, Roman Reigns didn't earn it, and oh, and he it. he gets a stop, championship stop, match. Stop! Stop! But you're my best friend, though. I'm your best friend. So you want to play? Uh, I... Come on, please. Okay. Okay, I see you at Bash in Berlin. What the fuck is that? <laughs> That's not how it went. Now you guys fuck. Fuck are we doing <laughs> here? You guys are fuck. All right. So that was, I'm not sure what the podcast is. Maybe y'all know. All right, cool. Let me go back to what I quote tweeted. So this is what I quote tweeted. I get what he is saying, but what heel on SmackDown right now is he going to feud with? This is not a Cody problem. It's a booking problem. There aren't enough credible heels on SmackDown right now, unfortunately. Now, the person who posted this uh, this uh, podcast clip, apparently he he's anti-Cody anyway. So anything that's bashing Cody, you know, he's going to be excited about. So it's kind of hard to take anyone's opinion like that seriously because we already know they're fueled by their hatred of someone. Whatever. Cool. The one point I can give this, these guys on this podcast some type of credence to the whole kevin owens thing yes it is kind of just thrown out there and random that he chooses one of his best friends to have a match with at bash in berlin and of course kevin owens reluctantly denied until you know roman reigns name got brought into the mix and he you know he got like got fired up and ultimately they you know decided to have the match cool i can i can understand why someone be like Really, that's that's the best we can do, but that has nothing to do with Cody here. Like he's talking as if Cody is the one choosing how this storyline plays out when they can only work with what with what the roster has. Like he's actively thinking like, oh, Cody should have been able to build himself up. I want y'all to understand this. <clears throat> Nobody after Roman, whoever was going to get that title. Nobody was going to be able to really fill those shoes. I'm sorry. Maybe they could try to get to that point, but nobody was going to be able to fill that. Even Cody himself said it when he won the title. Nobody, nobody will be able to fill the shoes that what Roman Reigns did those past three years 
but he only hopes <clears throat> that maybe he can do it some justice. They started off really good with the AJ Styles feud. I enjoyed that. Then they gave us a shoehorned, LA, uh, not LA Knight, um, Logan Paul feud. We knew why that was happening. We're going to uh, doing a Saudi show. And then they went straight into uh, the bloodline stuff with Solo Sokoa. And we kind of knew where that was going to go. That was going to be a bridging point to uh, Roman returning. But that's it. Those are the top heels on SmackDown. What else is he supposed to do? Tell me. What else is, who else is he going to face on SmackDown that makes sense? That you can buy into facing Cody? Santos Escobar? No. Right now, he's doing his own thing, feuding for the United States Championship, which we knew what was going to happen. They weren't pushing him up there, pushing him to the main event. Not right now. Carmelo Hayes, he's feuding with Andrade. Who else? A top heel. And these are just relatively fresh. Like, they're not even top heels. I wouldn't consider them top heels. I, I think I, could, I would put these guys in mid-card heel territory. There's no top heels outside of Solo right now. Well, he's going to fight one of the Bloodline members? He already beat the quote-unquote Tribal Chief. So what What are we going to do? I get it. Them Him facing Kevin Owens is kind of a, a left-field option, but me personally, I probably wouldn't have just had him on the show. I wouldn't have had him on Bash in Berlin, but you need him, I guess, to do something. So I don't know. They don't have nobody else. Now, if he's on Monday Night Raw, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. If he's on Monday Night Raw, he can feud with a Drew McIntyre. He can feud with a person they're pushing now in Bronson Reed if they wanted to. He can feud with um, who else is another top heel? If they wanted to really get into that bad, uh, Finn Balor, even though I wouldn't consider him a top heel, but he's in a top storyline, there's more heels that you can buy into and you'd probably be more interested in seeing fight uh, uh fight for the wwe championship there's more heels on that show that are doing something that people care about yeah you could say maybe austin theory or grayson walk no come on could they do something with them yeah but you still kind of got to buy into that as well and then some could say well um, Roman was facing so many other people that, you know, he elevated them. Uh, Cody hasn't elevated nobody. We got to stop that, bro. We got to stop it. You want to know why Roman Reigns title reign in the beginning worked? Because this is what we wanted. We wanted to see a character that we can finally actually believe in, even as a bad guy. So it didn't matter who Roman was going to face. It was all going to be new to us because we finally got what we wanted. The John Cena turn that we've always wanted, we got it in Roman Reigns. So every matchup he had felt better. Did he elevate some, especially like Jay Uso, the whole family stuff? Yes, he did. But let's stop sitting up here and making it seem like, oh, after those, a lot of those title matches, these guys were elevated to new heights. No, they weren't. These are people he had already faced at one point or another in his career, but now he's a bad guy. He faced John Cena already. Beat him. He beat him when he was a good guy. He beat him when he was a bad guy. How many times did he face Brock? We know how that ended. Daniel Bryan had some good matches with him, but, I mean, it, it was he was already Daniel Bryan. He already faced him before when he was a good guy and then beat him out of the company. Edge, that was interesting. That was that was unique, but it's Edge. Who did he need to elevate? He faced Cesaro one time in a very great match. Guess what happened? Cesaro went right back to the mid card and right out the company. So I'm trying to figure out who did he ultimately elevate. These are people he already faced. Let's not even get started on Kevin Owens. Had some great matches with Kevin Owens. But guess what? He was already Kevin Owens. He had some great matches with Sammy. But the Sammy thing, that's more the story involved with that. Sammy was already, oh, Sammy was the one that elevated the bloodline story. The one person that benefited the most and really got elevated was none other than fucking Jay Uso, which was perfect because he had family ties and it made sense. 
L.A. Knight. Face L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight was already over. I'm trying to figure out who did he elevate to the point of stardom. No. These, it worked because you wanted to see if someone could do it. He faced Drew already. And it, it always became, is this going to be the time? Is this person going to get the job done? That's what it always became. And there's nothing wrong with that story. But let's not sit up here and make it seem as if, oh, it's all Cody. Cody doesn't know what he's doing. No, stop it, guys. Let the hate go. It is much easier as a uh, character who's now a babyface to go at all. I'm um, now healed to go at all the baby faces on the roster. It's easier to do that because you can you can have that heel talk down to these baby faces and have the baby faces try to overcome them only for the heel to cheat. But when you're a baby face, you have to have a strong uh, a, a strong heel to bounce off of. Even if they're a chicken shit heel, someone that will do whatever it takes to win. You have to have that strong heel for them to bounce off of. Say, for example, Gunther's not the world champion and he's on SmackDown. That's a feud that you can cook because Gunther's been built up like a strong, dominant heel. Or at some point when Randy Orton does turn on Kit on uh, Cody Rhodes, that's going to be a must-see program because Randy Orton is already an established guy. And when he turns, it's going to be fantastic and you can build off that. But if you don't have any strong heels that people can buy into, to actually beat Cody, <clears throat> what are you going to do? And the biggest thing, and people just, I don't know if they choose to forget, what The Rock said after WrestleMania on that Monday Night Raw, and he's basically saying, your story with Roman is done, but me and your story has just begun. And when I come back, if you're still the champion, which we know he was still going to be the champion, when I come back, we going to have to run it. Once he said that, it was over. There was You booked yourself into a situation where you know there's a good chance Cody's not losing. Once they said that, it was over. We know whenever The Rock comes back, <clears throat> then we're going to see something potentially happen. So everybody else is just filler, essentially. And you can still make that work. But we already know. And even if The Rock didn't say that, it would be a little bit better knowing that, oh, maybe someone can upset Cody. But we know Cody's not losing that title damn near until next year's WrestleMania because you don't give someone de defeating the biggest heel in, re in wrestling history, for some would say, had the championship for over three years and then only have him hold the title for six months. No, he's going to most likely hold it to WrestleMania. Now, what they probably will do is maybe interject that Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes 3. We know that's going to be on the way. And I think that's when The Rock is going to get involved. And you can, it's going to spice it up once more things get into play with the Randy Orton feud. I do think it's going to get better. But right now, this is the product of booking. If he's on Monday Night Raw, I'm sure they could find someone where people would be interested in. We may know the outcome, but people would be interested in. Here, we know what's up. I'm not even really looking forward to this Kevin Owens versus Cody Rhodes match, but I do think they'll put on a good show. I don't see Kevin Owens turning, and I don't see him winning. So I get their point of view from the podcast, but at the same time, we got to let the hate go. Y'all be doing too much to approve a point. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Cody's the champ. He's the top one of the top guys in the company. That's just what it is. I, I just, I don't understand how people who sit up here and say they're the fan of the product, but want one person in Roman Reigns to just hold the title forever? No, his title reign had gotten stale. If you didn't want to admit it, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. It got stale. He beat everybody. It was time for him to drop it. Cody was the only person that made sense at the moment. And that's what we got now. Let it go, man. Let the hate go. But comment down below. Let me know how do y'all feel about Cody Rain, uh, Cody Rain, Cody Rhodes title reign, uh, so far. I know some of y'all are okay with it, some of y'all don't like it, some of y'all are indifferent. I know we've had this conversation, but I've been seeing a lot more people just want to shit on Cody as if he's the one making these grand booking decisions when that's not the case. 
we need to stop that shit bro like relax guys cody i'm sure will get better opponents relatively soon we just gotta wait to see how things plan out it's understandable to not like his title reign so far it's been maybe a kind of a letdown i get that but i still want to get y'all opinion on it comment down below and please be rational you ain't gotta like the guy but just make some sense maybe y'all can come up with some creative ways to maybe make cody's title reign a bit more exciting but i appreciate all the love support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking in me see y'all next one peace